Hey YouTube, what's going on? Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. This channel is There Has To Be Something More. I'm your humble host, Scott Moore. We are here another beautiful day in Quetzaltenango, Guatemala, AKA Shela. Supposed to be cloudy all day today, but the high is gonna be up in the 69, 70 range. It'll be down in the 50, around 50 tonight, so. Just another beautiful day. Woke up, Sam and I are up here on the roof and letting Sam sniff around a little bit, enjoy himself up here. They, Sam and Roscoe love coming up on the roof to run around a little bit. They, they don't like other dogs, so like taking them around with the street dogs is pretty much impossible. Uh, but anyway, we're enjoying another beautiful day here in Shayla, and thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Today, I thought we'd cover something called housing. So let's say you've done all your research, you've been doing this for a long time, and boy, I put in the time, put in the years, doing my research on what countries I wanted to go take a look at. Uh, let's say you've picked your country and you've even picked your city. So now, what do you do about housing? So. You know, there's the obvious choices, rent, buy, build. Uh, so I just thought I'd cover a few things. These are just kind of things to think about. Some of these are our past experiences. Um, renting. Uh, renting is great because it doesn't matter down the road, like who moves in next to you. If a disco moves in next door to you, it's really loud until late at night, every night, you just move. It's super easy. The downside is, as we've all seen recently, the big word inflation. So, of course, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, well, you know, renting's the easy way. You're not locked into anything. You can pick up and move cities, move countries. Uh, the downside is, you know, you do start to think, well, what about that $500, that great, fantastic house or apartment that I'm renting now that 10 years from now is going to cost me 1000 so, you know, you worry about things like that. So pros and cons to each of these, believe me. Uh, do I buy a house? I, I fall in love with the place I'm going to. Uh, as many people will constantly tell you, and I believe this is absolutely right, I would never consider buying a place till I've been in the country and the city for, gosh, at, at least a couple years. Just things change. Sometimes the honeymoon phase wears off, um, but you can buy. I will tell you that uh, Lydia and I have tried this once uh, many years ago in Costa Rica. We found this great little neighborhood that we really liked. It was maybe 15, 20 minutes from San Jose, so you could walk out on the main street, jump on a bus, really easy to get in and out. It was up in the mountains a little bit, so it was a little cooler. San Jose sometimes is like just not quite cool enough. It's like almost there, but not quite. But if you go up into the mountains, like towards Coronado, all of a sudden it's like, okay, these temps are nice now. But anyway, we found this great little house, a great little street uh, that was right off the main road. And as you walked through there, there was all these very nicely well-maintained houses, except for one. And just talking to some different people, we found out that the house might be for sale and we thought, gee, we can be in this nice little neighborhood. Maybe we can get a great deal because this house is run down. Um, so I'll try to, I'll keep a very long story short, but we bought the house. We put a down payment down. We did luckily did not pay cash for this house, um, but we put a down payment down and it was gonna be very, very inexpensive just because it was in really bad shape. And so we're running up to the Fetiteria, the Home Depot place that was close by, and we're bringing in bricks, we're bringing in uh, jacuzzi bathtubs, we're, you know, with the help of Lydia's brother and brother-in-law, uh, we're putting up walls. I mean, this is going to be a really cool little house. Um, you know, bringing in new roofing materials, and it really, it was just the three of us doing the, well, Lydia was helping a little too, I guess. Um, but it was Gualberto, Jose Luis, and myself, the three of us were doing the work. I don't know how to do it. I've never been a construction guy, so I'm just kind of following their lead. They've been building houses since they were little kids. 
So we're putting in walls. I mean, this is going to be such a cool place. We're putting in a chimney for the master bedroom. I mean, it's going to be just a great little place. And we, who knows, we may have lived there for years and years and years. Until one morning, six or seven o'clock in the morning, it was early. We get a knock, knock, knock at the door. We look outside. There must have been eight or ten police officers. And next thing you know, they're telling us, We've got three hours to evacuate and no, this is not legally our house. Long story short, we're dealing with, uh, we used a realtor that we knew, I mean, a, a lawyer that we knew, but she was a corporate lawyer for Vespa, the little scooters. She was their, one of their corporate lawyers. She was not a real estate lawyer. She got bamboozled by uh, other people that were supposed to be lawyers that weren't lawyers and the the down payment we had given had gone into this fake lawyer's mother's uh bank account it was just a disaster so anyway they end up giving us like four hours to get all of our stuff out of there and vacate the premises so we're lydia's running around has somebody bringing in a truck and i mean we are ripping this place apart we're like if, if they're going to rip us off, we're not leaving anything. I mean, we're going to leave this place like we found it. So we're ripping off the roof. We're, uh, we got people that are loading up all the stuff. I mean, we're selling it for, you know, jacuzzi bathtubs for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Anyway, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience. And I left there, left, uh, we left uh, Costa Rica, I don't know, maybe six months later. And I swore I would never buy another piece of property outside the U.S. Um, but, you know, you, you do look back and think, gee, if, if I just, maybe if I could have done a couple of other things different, could have ended up with the house. Heck, we'd probably still have that house. Uh, and it'd be something that we could, you know, run over um, and, you know, spend some time there, see Lydia's family. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Um, also, if you're buying a house, another thing is uh, most of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, there's no financing. So it's not like you're going to have a mortgage. I mean, most of the time for a, uh, a foreigner, an extranjero, you're going to you're going to be asked to pay if it's a hundred thousand dollar house to transfer a hundred grand into an account. That really makes me nervous uh, after our last experience. Now. You know, one of my best friends, he, he bought a house in Costa Rica and been living there for a long time and has had no problem. It was just, it was just one of those things. Um, but again, you know, so to, you know, even if you do get financing, you know, when you start looking at interest rates in some of these countries in Latin America, they are big. Um, so big payments, big interest rates, uh, probably not financing. And gee, do I really want to move a hundred grand or 200 grand just to do a transfer and all of a sudden poof that money's gone and did i get the house i think i did but uh of course the other uh, option would be to build um now the there's some some pretty cool things about building in latin america again check your city check your country they're all different but um you can build and there's no, there, a lot of times there's limited or no building codes. So you're pretty much in charge of how you want to build it, what you want to build with. Um, so uh, the, the other part that I really like is that you can buy the land and leave it there. You can come back a year or two later and put in a foundation. You can come back a year or two later and start putting up a few walls. So if you got ripped off and it's not your land, you're not gonna be losing a whole lot. I mean, even if it's a few years down the road and somebody comes over and claims this piece of land, you know, maybe you spent, you know, five or 10 grand on the, uh, the property and maybe you spent a couple grand laying a foundation, you're not gonna drop a hundred grand. Uh, so I do kind of like the idea of if I'm going to buy a place, maybe I build it and maybe I build it, as they say in Spanish, poco a poco, a little bit at a time. Um, so uh, now this is where so I'm going to lose some of you because I've been fascinated with alternative building methods for a long, long time. 
uh, bio construction. Uh, you're, if you investigate it at all, you'll see things like cob. Uh, here in Guatemala, you're going to see adobe houses. Um, there's straw bale. There's earth bags. There's all kinds of these alternative building methods. Now, in the in the if you do it in the U.S., if you were to build an adobe house, and you can see a lot of them, like in the southwest area of the U.S., big beautiful adobe houses where they're building, they're making their own bricks out of sand and clay and straw. Uh, usually, the the way they do it. And here, and before this video is over, I'm going to show you a couple of places here because you, in, if you don't look for it, you probably don't notice it, but there's adobe all over the place around Shayla. Um, but uh, really cool. Uh, the, the downside is if you're doing it in the U.S., you're probably not saving much money because it's labor intensive to make the brick or to make the cob that you're going to use. Cob is is just basically making an adobe house without making the bricks. They just put it, put the, the, the mixture of the sand and clay and straw up on the wall. Um, different ways to do that. But now some of these building methods, they've been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's big uh, cob houses like in England that, are, that have been there for hundreds of years. Uh, adobe houses here, hundreds of years. So this is a tried and true method. About 30% of the housing around the world is done with this earthen kind of building construction. So uh, here, the, the fact that it's labor intensive isn't a big deal. You can still do it really economical because the labor here is so cheap. Um, Lydia thinks I'm absolutely insane, but I've always wanted to build a little cob or adobe house somewhere. I doubt very seriously this would ever be, if we ever did it, if it would ever be a place that we lived in full time. But who knows, maybe it's a, a weekend cabin or a cabin at the lake or something like that. I just always thought that it would be kind of a cool project for me to be able to do, you know, maybe I, you know, drive over to this place, um, uh, you know, a couple, a couple times a week and go over there and build a little bit and then come home, uh, you may think that that's an absolute terrible idea, but if you if you Google or go onto YouTube and do a search for like building Adobe homes or building a cob house, you'll see thousands and thousands of videos everywhere. I always just thought it was really cool. It's a very artistic thing because these houses never look cookie cutter. I mean, they've got, you know, all these cool rounded walls. And so it's a very, a lot of times it's considered like a very hippie kind of thing. Uh, but you can really build these, you know, kind of a, with a traditional look uh, or not. So it was just something I always thought was so cool. It's also considered to be very healthy because you're not surrounding yourself. You're not sitting inside of a home that's got a lot of chemicals built into bricks and drywall and things like that. Um, most of the time it's ve very uh, heating and cooling efficient. Uh, so you're not locking yourself into a place, um, you know, very, very old. But anyway, you can find these type of buildings all the way from Southwest U.S. all the way down to the tip of Argentina. So just something I thought to think about. Uh, it was something that I've been kind of, I thought of as a fun project. Uh, initially, I thought, well, maybe I could get some of my daughters and grandkids to to come over and we could do it together as kind of a fun project. But I don't know. Uh, they've got their own lives. They're all getting older. I uh, don't know if that would interest them at all. But, uh, you know, maybe a fun project for you and your family. Um, I've also got to think about by the time Lydia and I finish traveling, you know, I'm about to turn 62 pretty soon, you know, so, you know, right now I think I could probably get it done physically, but, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, uh, not too sure. So anyway, just some different things to think about. Do I rent forever? Am I a cash buyer? Uh, do I want to transfer a big chunk of money into a bank outside the U.S.? Uh, if you're kind of thinking about what you might do, please leave a comment down below in the comments. I'd love to know what you're thinking about. Uh, lots of people on this channel watch it because either they want to retire early or they want to move abroad. 
Uh, a lot of people are looking for kind of low cost things, low cost lifestyles. So maybe this might be something that interests you. Um, before I leave, let me just give you a peek here. And I'm just gonna see if I can, like I'll show you a couple right here. So right down behind me, you'll see that house down there. It's completely adobe. Now it's in bad shape. There's a gentleman that lives there that is very, very, very old. Uh, but that's a cob structure. And as I walk down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you right here. Maybe I can get a peek at this also. But uh, so if you can see, let's see, you can see down there, that little apartment right there, that's our friend Gladys, she lives there. That is uh, an adobe structure that's been there forever. I mean, these walls that you can see over here, next door they're just about to start building here uh, and that's our landlord's sister and you can see that wall right there is adobe that's been there for who knows 100 years a couple hundred years so unless you really start looking now you can tell over here behind me that's the regular blocks that we all use now but the adobe is everywhere so anyway thought it was just kind of an interesting you may think it's crazy like lydia does uh, but I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you are thinking about retiring early, getting out of the U.S. rat race, you want to look for another low-cost paradise, uh, this channel might be for you. Just remember, if you need an adventure, you want some ideas about moving abroad, there has to be something more.